Can you go ahead? So um, next, I'm going to uh, recall what's known about the cohomology of real flag varieties. So there's two classical descriptions of uh, complex Grassmannians, so the cohomology of complex Grassmannians. So the first one is in terms of generators and relations. So these are the characteristic classes of the topological bundles on a Grassmannian. So the, uh, the cohomology of the complex Grassmannian is generated by the churn classes of the topological and quotient bundle, the, yes, and the quotient bundle on the Grassmannian. And the relation is given by the Whitney sum formula. So the other description, which is more close to the topic of the seminar, is in terms of the basis and structure constants. So we have a complex cell decomposition of the Grassmannian, which means that we only have even dimensional cells, and therefore the boundary map is tautologically zero. So there's no other dimensional cells. And therefore the integer coefficient chromology of the Grassmannian is generated by the fundamental classes of the Schubert varieties, again, parametrized by those that fit into a K times N minus K rectangle. And the structure constants of these uh, Schubert varieties are given by littlewood Richardson coefficients. So there's many combinatorial ways to compute these. Now, in the situation of real Grassmannians, again, the situation is less simple. Um, first of all, it's a fact, as we already saw in the examples before, that these contain a lot of two torsion classes. So as a first approximation, we might try to understand what happens with rational coefficients. So in the case when both the dimension of the subspace and the ambient space is even, um, we have a similar situation that we saw earlier, namely uh, the cohomology is generated by characteristic classes. Now these characteristic classes are point dragon classes since these are real vector bundles. And uh, the situation is similar. So these are these generate the cohomology and the relation is given by the Whitney sum formula. Now in the situation when uh, the dimension of the subspace is odd, there is again a sub uh, ring which is generated by characteristic classes. However, now there is an additional element which cannot be expressed in terms of characteristic classes. So the easy way to see this is that these point dragging classes all have degrees divisible by four, and this is an odd degree class. So this class turns out to be the fundamental class of a smaller Grassmann, and it generates an exterior algebra. Um, for the other description, uh, again, we have a cell decomposition into real cells and a boundary map, which is now no longer zero since we have all dimensional cells. And again, we have to compute the chain complexes that we saw earlier in order to determine which Schubert varieties have cycles, which Schubert varieties have fundamental classes. And it turns out that in the even-even case, um, these are generated additively by so-called double Schubert varieties. So by this, I mean the following. So if you have a Young diagram lambda, then you can associate to it uh, its double which just means that you take the same Young diagram and subdivide each square into four smaller subsquares. So this is a double of a Young diagram. And the structure constants of these Schubert varieties turn out to be the same littlewood Richardson structure constants that we saw earlier. So now I would like to say a few words about uh, what this additive structure looks like for flag varieties. So I should first introduce some notation. So to a sequence of positive integers, one can associate a flag variety, partial flag variety, which consists of flags uh, where, so this is just a sequence of subspaces embedded in each other, where the dimension of the jumps uh, is just the fixed uh, number of vi. So in other words, these are the dimensions of the quotients. So these flags also have a uh, cell decomposition into Schubert cells, and these are parametrized by coordinate flags. So uh, by coordinate flag, I just mean that all of these subspaces are uh, generated by a standard basis. So um, this gives a parametrization of the Schubert cells. So for example, in the case of flag two, two, three, so this means that we have two uh, plane sitting inside, four plane sitting inside in R7. Uh, we can take this specific 
um, coordinate flag. And we can parameterize these by the new basis elements that appear in the given subspace. So for example, here we have two, four. So these are the first two basis elements. And then the new basis elements that appear in the next one are three and seven. So these are the next two uh, indices and then the rest of the indices appear here. So one way I like to think about this is putting numbers in some boxes. So we have numbers one through N and we have some boxes of some given size and we have to put these numbers into boxes such that each box contains the appropriate number of elements. So um, these maps are also called uh, order set partitions and um, the number of such order set partitions is equal to the multinomial coefficient. So in this way, we get parameterization of the Schubert cells in the fl partial flag variety. So for example, when there's two boxes, then that means that we take, uh, we are in the situation of the Kressmannian and there's n choose k uh, Schubert cells in that case as we know. And in the case when m is equal to the number n, then we get that the permutations index the Schubert cells in the complete flag variety. So now we know what the generators of uh, this chain complex are, and uh, the incidence coefficients turn out to be zero or plus minus two um, in this chain complex. And this depends on somehow on the combinatorics of these order set partitions. So the additive structure of the cohomology uh, has a nice description in the so-called even cases. So by this, I mean uh, that you just take a sequence of integers and by 2D, I'm just going to note, denote that you double each integer. And for these 2D, you have a doubling map. So from the order set partitions of type D uh, to the order set partitions of type 2D. So this is just a mapping of numbers uh, one through N into some boxes of some given sizes. And you can replace this by replacing each number by the corresponding pair of numbers. So you would replace the first number with one, two, the second number with three, four, et cetera. So for example, when you have this uh, permutation two, one, three, then the order set set partition of type two, two, two will just be that you take uh, the second pair of numbers, first pair of numbers, and the third pair of numbers. So if you unravel what uh, this means on in terms of partitions on the Grassmannian, then this corresponds exactly to the operation where you take the double of a partition. And then the theorem says that the rational coefficient cohomology of these even flag varieties are generated by these Schubert varieties. So the proof consists of two simple steps. First, uh, we show that uh, these Schubert varieties are cycles, they are linearly independent. So this is some easy combinatorics uh, on some parity arguments and compare this to the dimension of the cohomology of the flag variety and show that this indeed forms a basis of the flag variety. So let me emphasize that rational coefficients here are important because uh, again, these cohomology rings also contain a lot of two torsion elements, but with rational coefficients, the situation is really just this simple. Surprisingly, the not so nice cases are the complete flag varieties. So here you can see uh, the Bruat graph, so part of the Bruat graph of the complete flag variety. So what the edges mean here, uh, they mean that the incidence coefficient between two Schubert cells are plus minus two, and the color of the edge means the sign of the incidence coefficient. So red is plus two and blue is minus two. So if you compute the cohomology of this uh, chain complex, then this is the cohomology that you get. And there's a few interesting phenomena here. So for example, here, uh, what happens is that um, this, these two Schubert cells, neither of them generate uh, Z modules, so neither of them are a cycle. But if you take their sum, then they give you one of the generators of one of the Z modules. So this is sort of similar situation when you have to glue together different Schubert cells in order to get a fundamental class. And here, something similar, uh, I mean, something different happens. So 
these two classes, either of them generates a free Z module, but when you take their sum, their sum gives a two torsion module. So actually as the generator of the other Z module, you can either pick this class or this class, and either of them gives you a generator of the Z module and their difference is a two torsion class. So some complicated phenomena start occurring when you consider flag varieties and as you go uh, to higher dimensions, the situation gets worse. So it might happen that you have to sum together uh, different Schubert cells. So it might happen that you have to sum together uh, several Schubert cells. And it would be a, an interesting uh, challenge to find some nice uh, description of these cohomology classes. So these are, uh, these are maybe the right basis isn't uh, in terms of Schubert cells, but maybe there are some nice subvarieties in the flag varieties, which uh, could represent generators. So <clears throat> additively, this is uh, an interesting question, I think. So next, I would like to discuss the multiplicative structure in the cohomology ring. Um, so I haven't spoken yet about the mod 2 cohomology of Grassmannians. The reason is that these are uh, much more simple. So with mod 2 coefficients, um, if we consider the same chain complexes, since all the incidence coefficients are zero plus minus two, modulo two, all of these are just zero. So every Schubert cell represents a fundamental class with mod 2 coefficients. So additively, we have a nice description of the cohomology of Grassmannians. And in order to get a multiplicative description, there is this nice theorem of Borel and Hefliger from the 60s, which says that if you have a complexification of a real variety, which is smooth, and the cohomology of the complexification is additively generated by fundamental classes of complexifications, then the conclusion is that there is a degree doubling ring isomorphism from the cohomology of the real points to the cohomology of the complex points. And this uh, map is given by the complexification of cycles. So if you have a fundamental class of a real subvariety, you take its complexification, and this map is an isomorphism. So applying this to the case of Grassmannians and flag varieties, this implies that the mod two littlewood richardson coefficients are the same. So littlewood richardson coefficients over Grassmannians are just integers. You can take their mod two reduction and these are going to give you the same uh, structure constants of the corresponding Schubert varieties over the reals. So there's a nice modern point of view on this theorem, and this was introduced by Haussmann, Holm, and Puppe. So this is uh, the theory of conjugation spaces. So the observation is that uh, you have a Z2 action acting on the total space of such a complexification with the fixed point set are the set of real points. So for example, there's a Z2 action on complex Grassmannian with a fixed point set, the real Grassmannian. So this sort of suggests that one should use Z2 equivariant cohomology to study this question. So the simplest example uh, you can draw down is the case of CP1, where complex conjugation acts by reflecting to the plane through the equator, and the equator is just RP1. So here um, you see explicitly that uh, the fixed point set of this Z2 action is just the real projective line. So what's important for us is that conjugation spaces are topological class of uh, Z2 equivariant spaces, which have the property that they have a degree halving isomorphism from the cohomology of the total space to the cohomology of the fixed point set. So this is the inverse of the map that we saw earlier, which maps the fundamental class of a real cycle to its complexification. And later Van Hommel showed that uh, under the conditions of the Borel uh, and Hefliger's theorem, if one takes uh, the fixed point set of a complexification that, so that this, sorry, this map kappa maps the uh, fundamental class of a complexification to the fundamental class of the real points. So this gives a modern point of view on Borel and Hefliger's theorem and an alternative proof. So 
we are interested in the multiplicative structure of even flag varieties, for example, even Grassmannians. And we can consider the following identification. So pick CN and forget the complex structure and just um, retain the U1 action given by the complex structure. So you can think of CN as R2N with a U1, a real linear U1 action. And this, any such uh, linear uh, action on um, R2N in, induces an action on the Grassmannian. So this action in, induces an action, a U1 action on the Grassmannian. And the second observation is that if you have a real subspace, in Cn, which is even dimensional, then it is complex if and only if it is invariant under this U1 action. Well, indeed, because uh, by definition, a subspace is complex if and only if it is closed under complex multiplication. So by this observation, we get that the fixed point set of this U1 action can be identified with a smaller complex Grassmann since the invariant subspace it just corresponds to fixed points on the Grassmannian. So let me point out that, so we have a U1 action on the double-sized even Grassmannian, a real Grassmannian, the fixed point set, a smaller complex Grassmannian. And the dimension of this real Grassmannian is double the dimension of the complex Grassmannian. So this sort of uh, indicates that one might look for some U1 uh, equivariant analog of these conjugation spaces. And also, uh, if one chooses the flags defining the Schubert varieties carefully, then the fixed point set of the Schubert varieties turn out to be the smaller complex Schubert varieties in the complex press manual. And there is a topological class of U1 spaces with this property. So now the Z2 action is replaced by a U1 action and F2 coefficients are replaced with rational coefficients. So there's a topological class of U1 spaces with such a multiplicative degree helping isomorphism, which have the property that for some nice sub varieties, they map them to the fundamental class uh, of the fixed point set. And the theorem says that these even flag varieties are circular spaces with a fixed point set, the smaller uh, complex flag varieties. And in particular, this degree halving map maps the fundamental class of such a double Schubert variety to the fundamental class of the smaller complex Schubert variety. In particular, this tells us what the ring structure is on the even dimensional, uh, on these even flag varieties. Namely, the littlewood richardson coefficients describe the structure constants of these double Schubert varieties. Of course, when you say circle, circle space, that's the same thing as U1 space, right? Not entirely. So that's a more stringent definition. So uh, U1 spaces are, uh, so circle spaces are particular class of U1 spaces, which have, I, I didn't say what the definition is. So the definition involves equivariant cohomology. What's important for us is really this degree halving uh, uh -huh. ring isomorphism property. So using this, we can conclude what the cohomology of the even flag varieties are, even real flag varieties are, since we know the cohomology of the, the cohomology ring structure of the complex flag varieties. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, ties back then to our original motivation, namely obtaining lower bounds in Schubert calculus. So in the end, what we get is that any double Schubert problem has a lower bound, the half size complex Schubert problem. So if you have such a Schubert problem, which is real and indexed by these double uh, partitions or doubled order set partitions, then there is a lower bound given by a corresponding complex Schubert problem. So here are some examples. So in the case of this Schubert problem, which is a problem in Grassmann 8R16, we get an upper bound uh, by doing the computation in the complex Grassmannian. So this gives an upper bound of 70. And to get the lower bound, we can consider a smaller Schubert problem, a smaller Grassmannian, 
do the computation there, and that gives a lower bound to this uh, enumerative problem. In particular, this is one of the instances of the balanced subspace problem that I mentioned earlier, where a complete list of the possible solutions appears. So as you can see here, there's some uh, larger jumps. And more gen however, this is more general. So this doesn't restrict to the problem of balanced subspaces. Namely, uh, for example, we can consider this problem in Grassman 8 R16 and uh, do the computation in the complex Grassmannian, which gives an upper bound of this number, do the computation in a smaller Grassmannian, which gives a lower bound of this number, and in between, the number of solutions are not understood. So we get a lower bound, an upper bound, and some uh, solutions in between. So even I would like to emphasize that this uh, approach has its severe limitations. So not every Schubert variety has such a cohomological interpretation. So many Schubert varieties don't, do not have fundamental classes at all. And uh, however, the Schubert problems without such a cohomological counterpart are still very meaningful and challenging. So Frank Sotil and uh, his collaborators did many simulations, for example, using computer, and they observed different possible solutions. So none of these problems, for example, have any cohomological interpretation. However, as you can see, uh, there's uh, many possible solutions appearing uh, for these Schubert problems. And there's also some interesting phenomena, some interesting lower bounds, some jumps. So uh, it would be really nice to have a general theory for uh, these real Schubert problems. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, thank the speaker. Very nice talk. And.